Okay, the time is 7 o'clock, so I'll call our regular meeting for March 12, 2020 uh, to order. I'll turn it over to Commissioner Hill and lead us in the vacation. Lord, thank you for today. Thank you for the update, sir. Lord, I guess that's it. Don't make the name, especially in our Amen. <clears throat> All right. The next item on the agenda is the approval of the agenda. Do I hear a motion to approve? Make a motion. All right. Got a first and a second. Any discussion before we move to vote? Hearing none. All in favor? Aye. And any opposed? Motion carries. Agenda is approved. Uh, item number three is the recognition of Faith Baptist Church for contributions to the town of Youngsville. All right. Uh, good evening. First off, I want to say thank you to uh, Faith Baptist Church and the members and staff that are with us uh, tonight. Thanks to their uh, generosity of providing us with a gym and helping us grow our program. Uh, this past season, we were able to set new records for participants in our basketball league and help serve our growing community better. Um, through this partnership, we were able to conduct one of the smoothest basketball seasons that, uh, that I've been a part of, and I look forward to uh, continuing this partnership moving forward. Um, I would like to recognize Stephen Wade, Megan Chadwick, Evan West, Ben McCroy, and Patrick Cottrell for all their support and help during this season, including setting up the gym every day, moving up equipment, uh, anything and everything you could imagine. They were there and, and, and very supportive this season. Um, finally, I would like to ask uh, Aubrey Cooper to join me at the podium so we may recognize him for his uh, contributions this past season. Um, when Aubrey first uh, pitched this idea to, uh, to me back in the fall, I knew there were going to be quite a few growing pains associated with the uh, drastic increase in, in participants. The, uh, the last thing that he told me that day that really stuck with me was, we're going to be here for you and support you in the town in any capacity that we can. And in my opinion, he certainly stuck by that comment throughout each step. Regardless of what I needed, he was there. Over the last six months of many meetings, observing practices and games, one thing was consistent. Aubrey Cooper was always there, ready to help and make a difference. For this, I, uh, I personally thank you, and the town of Youngsville thanks you. And I would like to uh, present Aubrey Cooper with this Youngsville Parks and Rec official jacket. So does this make me an official part of the team now? <laughs> You're part of our team now. There you are, sir. Speech. speech, speech. I didn't say preach. I said speech. Yeah, you, you know. I, <laughs> but first of all, thank you, Andrew. We're so excited to be partnering with the town and other organizations just to better serve our community. We really believe when we work together, we serve the people of Youngsville and our community better. We're excited about what Andrew and the Parks and Recreation Department is doing. We're excited about all those kids and those families that are coming through both of those gyms, and just the excitement on their faces and everything that's happening. And our prayer is that the growth you saw this year is nothing compared to what you're going to see in years to come. Uh, so with that said, we, Andrew and I have been talking about this for a while, but we just want to officially extend that, you know, at partnership next year for the use of our gym and, and hoping that uh, you're going to have to think outside of the box where you're going to play games and schedule games and everything yet. So thank you, Andrew. Thank you, Mayor, Commissioner Phil, for all that y'all have done to, uh, to support this great town. We're going to continue to pray for you guys for wisdom and your leadership as, as you go forward. So thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right, next on the agenda is citizens' comments. If we have any citizens who would like to comment, I will yield, and you have the floor. You can. Do you want to speak from there, or do you want the podium? That way everybody can see.
young students now that shouldn't be before. The only problem is when people come down the street now, we find this road goes out on the way at the bottom, they have to turn around and come up and make a rush on the center, and then if they even work the time and say, you saw a girl from that tonight, and they're coming over. So they're not stopping, they need that left turn on the center. But uh, that's why that's something that <laughs> Thank you very much. All right. Do we have any other citizens' comments? Hello. Uh, my name is Brian Whitley. I'm one of the owners of the Victorian uh, right across the street. Um, I want to come today uh, really to introduce myself and kind of start a conversation. I know I um, reached out. I spoke with a few of you already, and I really appreciate your time. Um, but a couple concerns when it comes to the sound ordinances that we have here in town. Um, there's a few things that I was hoping we could uh, revise, uh, and I'm currently working. Um, spoke with Emily earlier today. Thank you for your timely response. Um, very quick. It was awesome. Uh, but hoping to get on the agenda for next month. Um, but I did want to stop by today and kind of ask if there's anything you would like to see from me um, to support, I guess, what I would like to see changed, um, mainly when it comes to amplified sound, um, the cutoff time of 9 p.m. and the limitation to 20 hours per year per location. Uh, from what I've heard, uh, one of those rules doesn't really get followed as of now, so maybe having it removed would be nice. Uh, but yeah, any comments or questions from y'all would really be appreciated. When do you want turn to it extend off. it until? So right now it's cut off at 9, correct? Yes. Cat, Hi, Kat. Good to meet you. Um, so right now it's 9 o'clock, mm -hmm. right? And so you wanted to extend it until? I'm not pushing for a lot. Right now I'm open to the idea of either 10 or 11, um, and maybe just doing it on the weekends, uh, just so we're not completely changing everything. Um, but I think small steps in the right direction, I think it will really help uh, the economy around here as well as small businesses and kind of entice more people to come to town. Yeah, and primarily uh, the business that you're in is hosting events, hosting weddings, and things of that nature. So it's, it's more along the lines of a special uh, events type of an issue anyway, mm -hmm. right? Okay. Um, yeah, I, I know you and I have met and, and spoke before, and I think you've spoken with Phil and, and Chief Whitley as well. Um, you know, clearly, I, I mean, I'm supportive of it. I think the, the problem that we kind of run into is that um, as I've alluded to you before in the past, there was a reason why it was written that way. And um, I think as the town continues to grow and change a little bit, uh, I think it's it's suitable for us as a board to take a look at those older restrictions that were in place and then maybe adjust or revise as, as we see fit. So um, from a standpoint of, of what you guys need to bring uh, as far as the presentation goes, um, I don't know what the commissioners would, would want to see, you know, as, the, as it pertains to that, but um, I don't know, Phil, do you have anything to add to that? You um, I, I think, we, <laughs> sorry, I just had to, you know, reset the batteries. I think if we had another meeting or you could meet with staff, you know, whether it's Emily or Chief, to just give the board a better idea about what you're asking for, which I think we're kind of clear on, um, and then the total number of rentals, you know, or uh, events that you're going to be hosting in an entire year, just to give them a concept for, you know, the true ask, I think would be very helpful. So just okay. like total number of uh, rentals that you anticipate for this upcoming year, for example, because um, I know that we're kind of getting on that season, right, as the weather warms up, people want to, you know, get married and do those, those types of things. And then um, maybe if we were to extend or the board was to extend the hours then you know what that would mean to you as a business you know whether it's holding additional events additional revenue how that would impact you um i think that would be very helpful does that okay. give you at least a, yeah absolutely yeah. And you can get that stuff together and just email me or emily or you know both of us and okay. we can review it so that way the the board uh, has a, a good you know concise set of data to look at absolutely and i, I do plan on having uh all the people i've spoke to i know brandon's here tonight with his wife thank you mm -hmm. Um, in support of this decision as well. So it wouldn't just be beneficial to myself, but a lot of other businesses in our community can definitely definitely help. So. Sure thing. Okay. 
Yep. Absolutely. I think before, so it's, it's, we take a similar approach to public engagement that we took to closing Nassau and that if we were going to propose, uh, you know, amending the ordinance to change the hours, then we would let citizens know in advance. We'd hold a public hearing. We'd, you know, put door hangers on all the people that live nearby that are affected so they had an opportunity to publicly comment. So that way you, you as decision makers have all the information that you need to, to weigh in. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, sir. All right. Any other questions for Mr. Whitley? Anything else from us? That's it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. Do we have any additional citizens' comments? All right. Hearing none, we'll move along into the financial report. I don't see our finance guru, so I think that's you, Mr. Cordero. That's me for now. <laughs> um, I don't have anything noteworthy. Everything is going as, as according to plan. Uh, I think we're, we're great financially. The budget uh, amendment is very straightforward. I'm happy to entertain any questions, but I think that we're executing the budget in a very responsible manner. Sure. So the, um, the general fund is – so basically what we're doing in, in all of this is we're taking – the projections from the beginning of the year, and we're truing them up to the actual budget. So, for example, like the Powell Bill allocation, um, we estimate what the state, because th that's money that we get from the state uh, that comes from the gasoline tax. We estimate to the best of our ability and to the best data available what we're going to get at the beginning of the year, but inevitably the number is different. So, this is just adjusting the uh, budget to actual. But there's no, um, no shortage of revenue to cover the expenditures in the current year, which I think is probably what you were looking for. <laughs> Yeah. Any other questions? And certainly at any point in time, if you have any questions, feel free to call myself or, or um, Carrie, and we're happy to answer those. I'm glad you said the first name because I'm still stuck on the second and third. Hmm. So, okay. <clears throat> All right. Uh, any other questions about the financial report? All right. Moving along into the consent agenda. The action requested here is to approve consent agenda as submitted. Do I hear a motion? Got a first and a second. Any discussion before we move to vote? All right. Hearing none, all in favor? And any opposed? Motion carries. There is no old business, so we'll move along into new business. Uh, which item A is consider a watershed high density development application McLeod Self Storage at 104 Tarboro Road. Good evening. Good evening. Um, members of the board, um, the, this application, uh, I think we've indicated, staff's indicated to the board, this will be, the, I believe, the first uh, uh, watershed permits come to the board probably in some time now, uh, at least in the you know, probably the last seven or eight years, I think maybe in the last one. Um, and it's coming forward under the uh, uh, ordinance that was previously adopted, which is still in effect currently, and the application that was filed uh, you know, predated the current Unified Development Ordinance, so following those particular rules. But essentially, either way, the watershed regulations that apply basically would be the same types of things. Um, Aaron Klinger was not able to be here tonight, so I wasn't feeling that great. But um, we've got a um, in your package. You probably had a chance to at least uh, skim through this, but I'll get the highlights for you. Uh, and also indicate Harry Mitchell with the Mitchell Design Group, the engineer, is here with us as well to answer any questions about this project. Um, and really, what is this all about? Um, uh, the watershed basically uh, is, is clearly identified in order to help protect the potential water quality downstream to uh, what could have been a future water intake for Wake Forest. Uh, part of that watershed uh, and that the, the, the streams and so forth to feed into that is within our zoning jurisdiction. Uh, this particular area off Tarboro Road near where the area, including the Dollar General Gatekeeper and those types of businesses are in that same area. Uh, they, um, uh, the ordinance does provide uh, an automatic. Uh, you can go up to 30% coverage in pervious surface, those things that where water runs off the roofs and the pavement and that sort of thing. 
uh, of the site otherwise, uh, keeping the majority of the site. Uh, uh, so. Okay, any questions uh, from the commissioners to Mr. Clark? Okay, hearing none. Uh, so the action requested here is to approve the watershed high density development application. Okay. You want that as a set? Does she want that as a set? So is she getting that? Okay. Yeah. 
Um, let, me, let me wait for Emily to get caught up. You good? good. You good, Em? Okay. All right. So, uh, again, the action requested here is approve the watershed high density development application. All of the other commentary from Mr. Clark in regards to three A, B, and, a, B, and D, pardon that, A, B, and D, have been entered into the record. So, uh, I will entertain a motion to approve. All right. We have a first and a second. Do we have any discussion before we move to vote? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. And any opposed? All right. Motion carries. Item B is resolution in support of measures to increase the future capacity of the Franklin County Public Utilities local water supply. Uh, I believe Mr. Cordero has sent... Uh, several items. We'll just we'll hit the pause button real quick. Sorry about that. I knew it was about to get loud, so I didn't want to. I didn't want you guys to misinterpret anything that I said. Uh, but I believe uh, Mr. Cordero here has sent everyone an email. Um, with some of the dire issues that we have facing not only our town, but the county as well from a water um, supply situation. So uh, did you have anything that you wanted to add to that prior to adopting uh, the resolution? I, I do not. I don't have anything to add. Just uh, wanted to make you aware that I did speak with uh, Ms. Angela Harris today about this topic. She's aware that we'll be approving that this evening, and I also plan on uh, sharing this information with the County Board of Commissioners during its regularly scheduled meeting on Monday, Monday. Yep. March 16th. Okay. And uh, also wanted to share with you that the Town of Franklinton's Town Manager, Greg Bethea, has indicated to me that they uh, intend to move forward to pass a similar resolution in support of uh, us making a recommendation to the County to move forward on the number of topics that are mentioned in the resolution. Okay. Sounds good. Um, were there any questions from the commissioners to Mr. Cordero? Okay. All right. Sounds good. Well, hey, the action I requested here is to adopt the resolution. All right. We've got a first and a second. Any discussion before we move to the vote? I agree. I, and, and the town of Bunn, um, I haven't received confirmation yet, but I anticipate they'll join in as well. Mm-hmm. All right. Any additional discussion? I just wanted to say thanks for all your work on it. I know you put a, a lot of effort on this issue. We appreciate it. Yeah, that's what you pay me to do. I'm happy to do it. <laughs> Thank you for your appreciation. All right. Any additional discussion? All right. Hearing none, we've got a first and a second. Um, all in favor? Aye. And any opposed? Motion carries. Uh, item C is resolution in support of adopting county zoning in Youngsville's former area of extraterritorial jurisdiction. Did you want to add anything to that? Uh, no, just to let you know that the uh, we, we had talked previously about, or, or via electronic correspondence, that the, the town's attorney um, has now successfully secured an injunction in Franklin County Superior Court to continue the uh, town's previous zoning in these areas, so that's been secured. Uh, certainly will be helpful uh, to provide continuity of, of planning regulations. And as soon as the county adopts its uh, zoning, which is anticipated in the first couple weeks of April, then we'll go back to the court and ask them to make that go away because it will no longer be necessary. But this is just supporting what the county intends on doing, I believe, on its April 6th meeting. All right. Uh, any questions from the commissioners to Mr. Cordero? All right. Well, the action requested here is to adopt the resolution. I'll open the floor for a motion. Make a motion. All right. Which one wants the first? Which one wants the second? Tie goes to Ladies the runner. First. Ladies first. Ladies first. Okay. All right. <laughs> Commissioner, Commissioner Red with the first. Commissioner Wood. Commissioner <laughs> You fail on both accounts? <laughs> Commissioner Wood is with the second. Okay. Uh, so we've got a first and a second. Any discussion before we move to vote? Hearing none, all in favor? And any opposed? Motion carries. And item D is to appoint Carrie Patton Motluck. 
Did I say that right? Mm-hmm. That's financing. Perfect. Perfect. Okay, good. All right, check that one off the list. Um, appoint carry as finance officer with related authority to co-sign checks. Um, action requested here is to approve the appointment. All right, we've got a first and a second here. Any discussion before we move to vote? Hearing none, all in favor? And any opposed? All right, motion carries. Uh, reports and other business. Uh, I get to go first, being the mayor. Super proud of my uh, adult league basketball team, the Skywalkers. Uh, that's why you have this. This is not a uh, modification of my head. I know a lot of people thought that with all the shining going on that it was it was a statue. It's not shining. <laughs> oh, that was good. Um, but yeah, so the uh, us old timers got out there and, and, and did it on the basketball court and, and had a good time doing it. Um, the birthday boy here, uh, Mr. Smith, scored, I believe, a career high and knocked down many, many, many three pointers. And our ace reporter in the background over there uh, did some damage as well. So uh, very proud of that accomplishment. Uh, I, I definitely, you know, with the coronavirus and everything going on, it's it's a little bit of a scary scenario with. A lot of sports being canceled. There's going to be a lot of kids that don't have after school activities and things like that. Um, so I'm glad that we were able to get that in. I'm coaching uh, girls soccer at Cedar Creek Middle School, and we found out today that uh, the season has been basically postponed for a while. I know our All Stars are struggling through that as well. So um, hopefully, with what Commissioner Headland said earlier, this can be remedied very quickly because it's going to be. Um, I think it's going to be some stress on the supply chain and a lot of other things. So, anywho, um, everybody around here stay safe. And then I will yield my time to Mr. Cordero. Thank you, sir. Just a few notes. Uh, first, um, I appreciate your comments, uh, Ms. Powell, on uh, Nassau. Just wanted to let you know that we have, through a variety of, of Man, a variety of, of, of efforts uh, tried to tell Google to close that street on Google Maps. I say that because I know that a lot of people use Google Maps as a way to get around town, and a lot of people that are not familiar. Um, and that, from the research that I've done, it usually takes between 15 and 30 days for them to kind of take a look at those things. But just to let you know, we've tried to you know do additional things to, for people that do use Google Maps to let them know that that's closed and it won't route them through there. And then also, I think that as time passes, you know, more people will commute. In that area and realize that it is closed but I appreciate your comments um, also wanted to say that the um, the new town hall um, building um, we had discussed this previously and I'll give a, a little bit of more information about this during our work session on the 19th um, but um, our plan is to uh, refinance the old town hall building and uh, build a new public works facility and then also finish the rest of the old town hall building um, we plan on adding it some additional office spaces and then also turning that kind of back area into a new meeting space for the board that will have more modern facilities. Not that this uh, area doesn't have a lot of character and that I, you know, not that I don't love this building, um, but I think that it would provide uh, a, a, lot, a lot of additional resources to provide training for the police department, et cetera. So we're moving forward on that, um, on that end. And then we're also um, have an engineer that's been retained to develop a site plan for the public works facility that will be on South College Street near the pump station there, uh, kind of near the cemetery, and that'll be used to uh, maintain town vehicles and do other uh, the, the sorts of things of that nature. Just wanted to provide you a brief update on that. Um, the community house is set to be renovated, at least the bathroom and the, and the doors, a couple other things are gonna be renovated April set, uh, 10th to the 17th. So that's when the contractor will be here, just so everybody's aware. Um, I do have a meeting scheduled with the North Carolina Department of Transportation on Monday, the, the 16th. I believe uh, Commissioners Brame and uh, Headland will be joining me, um, and we plan to discuss a variety of topics. Uh, just to kind of review our agenda, we're going to be discussing the town's uh, downtown improvement project, which will be taking place uh, this fall, hopefully bidding that in June, and also in installation of the protected left turn signal that happened recently at uh, Cross and Main and the continual improvement of that timing of that signal, especially in connection with the signal at Five Points intersection. We'll also be discussing uh, lengthening, there's a right turn lane across the main as you're coming uh, northbound on uh, Highway 96 to take a right. There is a little right turn lane there, but uh, we'd like to widen that if possible, so we'll discuss that. 
Um, also, at one point, there was a traffic circle uh, on DOT schedule that was not funded uh, for the Five Points intersection. We'll discuss that as well. Um, let's see. We'll discuss the topic of the Crosstown Boulevard that is on the town's future land use map that was prepared and, and any potential uh, participation by DOT in that. And then we'll also uh, discuss uh, some potential improvements that might be planned for the Main Street and or Tarboro Road and Cedar Creek Drive as you as you turn left there. I know there's a lot of uh, uh, people that have commented on that and, and that being an inefficient intersection. So we might be able to retime that signal or make additional improvements to it. That's all I have. All right. Do I have any questions on any of that? Yes, ma'am. What's the word on a bypass? I've heard stories of two different plans of a bypass to go around the town. There's no current plans, conceptual or otherwise, for that. I do intend to bring that topic up for discussion on March 16th when I'm meeting with NCDOT, and I'll certainly provide this board an update at their next meeting in April. But thank you. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. Any other questions? Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, Commissioner Redd. All right. Commissioner Hedlund? <laughs> First of all, the road was just like Sylvia from the Soprano set. I was out when they brought me in. <laughs> um, the, the, the woods from Longshore is postponed until right. the fall because of the virus and everything going on right now. A lot of elderly people that work here and then attend the event. So it's going to happen, but it's going to happen in the fall. Uh, we've cleaned a lot of roads lately. Um, 1A was cleaned by, by Keith and he helped me. Uh, the town staff helped clean up some of the roads on uh, Holden and also uh, Park Avenue. Um, the We Serve group cleaned up South Cross Street. Scott and Jim Moss cleaned up 96. Uh, so all told, we have about 50 bags of road that we got picked up in the last week or so. So I just want to thank Scott, thank you. Jim, thank you. Thank you to the research folks. We have like six volunteers last week. Plus and so I appreciate it. So it looks better. Um, September 26th is the Fall Festival Car Show. That's a Saturday. And that's all I have. All right. Fall well, Festival. Okay. All right. Commissioner Wiggins. All right. Commissioner Johnson. And Commissioner Bray. So I attended the CAMPA meeting on February 19th and got a few items to share from that. Um, the Northeast Area Study, which took place, I believe it was uh, 2015, uh, it's time to um, renew that study. So Brandon Watson uh, from, with CAMPA is going to be heading that up and he said that it should be starting soon. I don't know if he's already reached out. Uh, to town staff or not, but uh, the indication was that, that would start up soon. Um, members at uh, Campo um, emphasized the importance of completing the 2020 census, uh, so they, they communicated that importance to us and recommended that we uh, promote that within our, our town. Uh, you know, different ways you could do it, Facebook, mailings, uh, the utility bills, just include something on there. Um, they indicated that uh, it was basically like $16 per person, I'm sorry, $1,600 per person loss uh, in not completing the census. So for every resident that we have um, that does not complete the census, uh, census uh, we lose $1,600. In like future federal funding. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, um, and then I've got the next Campo meeting next Wednesday. So. I'll report back when I hear from there. That's all. All right. Thank you, Commissioner Brain. And we'll move to planning and zoning. Uh, Ms. Klinger is not here, so Mr. Clark, did you have anything to add on her behalf? Uh, just a very few things. I think uh, um, Phil has indicated some of them going to cover, but basically uh, uh, that Aaron was able to meet with. Uh, uh, Shelby Powell and um, uh, and with Brandon Watson about the uh, Crosstown Boulevard and trying to look that look at that proper dance in terms of 
some layouts, which will be more information coming to the board later on that. Um, and also with regard to Wake Forest and some of the plans they have for traffic to the north of them and how that kind of fits together with, uh, in many ways, with the concepts we have on our current plan. So, uh, and that's a positive conversation and any development, again, taking place along any of those potential corridors there or anywhere else where we have any adopted plans, certainly want to make sure that uh, those developers uh, you know, work with those particular plans uh, included in their, their proposals. Um, we are certainly waiting for you know, official approvals of any water allocations to the uh, half dozen or more uh, local projects, which we're mm -hmm. certainly looking forward to. Uh, and I know that meeting is coming up with the commissioner uh, soon. But we have uh, uh, currently, right now, just so the board's aware, if you may be aware of this, but Hampton Village Apartments, Phase 3, on North uh, uh, on 96 of Wolfpack Lane. I uh, just wanted to kind of reiterate Commissioner Brame's comments about the Northeast Area Study. Uh, that's kind of just a general study about the area, how it was going to progress, and it'll inform you know, decisions that DOT makes and other municipalities in the county make as far as uh, you know building new roads, things of that nature. There's going to be a website that the consultant's going to create as a, as a part of that process, and so we'll certainly share that with you and link it via the town's website when that's up. And then also, if uh, there's any board members that are interested in participating in uh, key leader meetings um, or stakeholder meetings as part of that process, certainly let me know. Um, whether you know the mayor or Commissioner Brain or anyone else, uh, we can certainly allow you to uh, facilitate you attending those meetings. I think it would be important to have a voice there. Um, Aaron will provide periodic updates to the board, and I'm sure Commissioner Brain will as well as that process uh, unfolds. That's all I have. All right. Any questions for Mr. Clark? All right. Hearing none, we'll go with our town attorney, Mr. Bartholomew. Yeah, Clear, clearly, we get a discount though, right? Yeah. Just making sure. Okay. Oh.
Does anybody have any questions for me? We already know where the place was, right? We did, yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Any questions about that? Alright. Alright. Thank you very much. All right, Chief Whitley. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, before I get into my report, I think it bears mentioning that I've received an email stream from a fellow chief in Wake County. They're hoping up there to be received in response to the coronavirus outbreak and cases that we have to have down there. And it looks like they're moving into limited service potential for the next 30 days. Like I say, while that isn't directly about us here in Franklin County, uh, I think that's partnerships that we have to work with those folks on the basis of the So, like I said, I wanted to want to mention. Uh, calls for service uh, for the month of February, we received 354 calls for service uh, as compared to 283 uh, uh, same month last year. Of those, 22 reports were written and 93 citations were issued. Uh, most significant, as many of you already know, uh, on February 5th, uh, the performance fee was regularized uh, by two months as of now unidentified uh, persons. It didn't take anything from the performance fee when entered the front door there. Uh, and from viewing the video, it appears that uh, whatever type of narcotic they were trying to put their hands on them, we couldn't locate uh, due to the pharmacists uh, and the conversations I had with them. So, Created rearranging his narcotics and even in some of them came in a secure facility in his presence. So we find what they're looking for. Uh, but we're working with um, Apex and Carry on this case. They had similar incidents within a similar time frame. Suspects matched those descriptions and they did actually uh, walk away with Ambien and uh, a couple of other uh, narcotics from those conditions. Uh, motor vehicle collisions. Uh, <coughs> This year, and we reported eight during the same month uh, last year. Fortunately, uh, the problems are listed below. I won't go through each one itemized, but you have it in the report. Uh, fortunately, there were no significant injuries associated uh, with those collisions. Uh, while I've been in law enforcement uh, long enough and I'm just a little super superstitious, just enough, I will say I won't attribute it to the closures directly as of, as of late. Uh, because of the short time since they've been closed. But fortunately, we haven't had any um, collisions at Nassau uh, or in the surrounding areas that we can directly contribute to those closures or to that new term. Uh, and if you recall, the months uh, leading up to those closures, we were typically doing a week or two each month. So uh, it, it does appear that we are having some success in those closures. So, uh, the weekday traffic assignment, uh, we've been out across the main. Uh, hopefully, you've seen some of our officers out there in the morning redirecting traffic as necessary until they recently installed the protected green arrow. So, we have uh, we've discontinued that effort. However, we are moving down to uh, to the blue uh, turn, yes, ma'am, uh, and we'll be addressing that. Uh, we've taken it on uh, as we do with most operations uh, that you know, are not. Significant, we'll have significant impacts, immediate impacts on public safety. Uh, where we can is an informative public information campaign. We did that over the course of last week, uh, but in the weeks to follow, we'll probably take more aggressive and enforcement action as necessary to folks continue to disregard that, that term. Uh, and speaking of uh, Google, as of yesterday, I know the closure was in place on Nassau. I uh, just plugged it in by happenstance coming through town and, and it, was, it was working. So, good news there. Hopefully, that will cut down on some of the turnarounds. Uh, community policing efforts, uh, called with the cop, uh, rescheduled and just attended the uh, uh, March 6th uh, call with the cop and the polar plunge. Uh, recently, I'm waiting to get a uh, report back. Administrative assistant on what amount to find out what the, uh, the results were of that. Uh, the town of Easter Haven Hunt, as you know, on April 4th, and the cover run on the 4th. As of now, uh, Operation Underground Railroad has been notified and have publicized that run. Uh, we're waiting to see what kind of numbers are going to come up as far as the final numbers for that run to figure out what we need to do for further allocation. Okay.
All right. Thank you for that, Chief Whitley. Any questions from the commissioners? All right. Moving along, uh, Assistant Chief Graney is not here. He did send me a note that said that he will not be here. He's still at work, uh, believe it or not, dealing with uh, coronavirus uh, issues. And the only thing that he has that he wanted me to speak into existence is their awards ceremony it is March 28th at 4 p.m. at Faith Baptist Church. All town officials and staff are invited to attend. And moving along into parks and recreation, Mr. Smith. Uh, last night concluded all of our rec basketball, so it was a great uh, adult season for some of us. <laughs> um, and, and again, thank you to Faith Baptist and as always to Franklin County Schools as well uh, for letting us use their gyms. Uh, we definitely could not have done it without two gyms this year and potentially we'll have to look into a third next year, uh, which would be a really exciting opportunity. Um, baseball registration ends tomorrow, as does adult kickball. Um, baseball is higher than it was last spring, so we're almost maxed out there. We'll have someone on every field every day at every hour. So that's a pretty great sign. Uh, kickball seems to be doing well. Uh, we're looking forward to another season there. Um, also, uh, if you ever have time, come out and play pickleball with us. We're normally playing on Sunday, every Sunday afternoon. Uh, Mayor Flowers and myself and a couple of our friends and wives go out and play. There is a train behind me right now. They're not observing the noise ordinance, by they're the not, way. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so we got USAPA certified, United States of America Pickleball Association certified uh, recently. So there will be a nice sign that's on its way from the USAPA to hang up there. And uh, we now have an official pickleball ambassador. Uh, and they will be doing a free clinic uh, on April Monday, April 6th from 8.30 to 10.30. It's uh, capped at 10 people of any age. Uh, the paddles and balls will be provided. So if you want to come out and learn about pickleball, um, it'll be there on the 6th of April. So uh, How do you sign up for that? Same, uh, just on, on the uh, online website that you would for the youth sports and adult sports. So um, other than that, that's what we got going on now. Oh, uh, as Mayor Flowers mentioned earlier, the uh, SWAC basketball tournament has temporarily been postponed. Uh, our 12U girls were supposed to be playing in Wendell tonight, so hopefully that'll get uh, rescheduled sooner rather than later. So, other than that, thank you. I have a yep. What's the status of you? You're on that board. I am. Yes, sir. Uh, we are still planning on going ahead with that. If anything, a decision would be made within 24 to 48 hours um, ahead of time. And then we also implemented a rain out plan today uh, that would be then held inside at Faith Baptist. All right. Any additional questions for Mr. Smith? All right. Hearing none, we'll move along to our town clerk, Ms. Hurd. Speak into the mic one more time. We got battery issues. Oh, wow. Um, as we were speaking about the water allocation earlier, one of the side effects is that the annexation petition we received a few months ago, um, they requested it be put on hold because they did not receive their allocation. So once they appeal the process and we move forward, they may um, come back and either resubmit or just reactivate their annexation petition. But right now, that's just going to okay. be on hold for the next few months. All right. Anything else as we shift the microphone back into play? Okay. Uh, any updates for maintenance? Uh, nothing significant for maintenance to report. I would just make another comment that your next meeting is a week from today at Town Hall on March 19th at 7 p.m. That'll be a budget workshop. We'll just talk about next year's budget. Oh, we absolutely. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Thank you. That's March 19th, right? <laughs> yes, sir. Okay. Correct, at Town Hall, not in this building. 
we try to keep you on your toes. <laughs> I gotta go that way. I gotta go this way. I gotta go this way. Okay. Um, all right. Well, that sounds good. And I know uh, they're probably looking forward to having their own location with their maintenance um, shop. I would imagine that town hall staff, as well as the PD, would be happy to get some of those big trucks away from our current town hall so we can actually park some vehicles there. So that'll be outstanding. All right. Uh, no need to go into closed session. So this meeting is adjourned.